On an island surrounded by wrecked ships, Amelie gives birth to a baby. The reporter Lola records the whole process. A grandfather comes up to the girl and blesses the baby. After that, he goes to the cliff edge and jumps off. An unknown virus has wiped out most of humanity. There is an island near Germany. It is completely isolated from the world and 513 people have created a new nation. They do not have unlimited food, because of which when a child is born, any other inhabitant must sacrifice themselves. Anyone can choose to sacrifice themselves. Each inhabitant has their place on the table, and if they break laws, their name is omitted on the list. The very last person on the list must become the new victim. It turns out that Amelie is going to have two children. They couldn't find out, because the island doesn't have the right equipment. Dr. Marek helps the woman. A gathering of the main people of the settlement begins. Marek suggests breaking the rules and not sacrificing a new person. Beatrice is sure that if they do this, then the other inhabitants will stop sacrificing themselves. But Beatrice can't take all the responsibility and suggests they vote. Lola records a documentary about the birth of two children to Amelie. She reminds them that the last three people will be candidates for elimination. In 511th place is Christian. He is startled to see his name and tries to understand why he went down in the rankings. Christian says that he will refuse to jump. Then his friend Hendrik reminds him that the last time a man refused to jump, he was put in a steel cage and thrown into the water. In 512th place is Elise, who is considered useless because of her age. In 513th place is Etienne. He is simply called a criminal. Tomorrow, Marek, along with his son Linus, come to the military bunker. Marek tries to develop a vaccine for the virus, but he fails. He lacks medical equipment and new samples. Linus suggests going back to the mainland and collecting new samples. Marek thinks there is no point since the military has already searched most of the mainland. But Linus wonders if they are lying to them and have not actually been to the mainland. Their conversation is interrupted by Judith. They have to spread the cure around the island. They start by visiting Etienne's house. His wife Lisa is convinced that Judith is the reason her husband has dropped to the bottom of the list. She replies that Etienne stole medicine from her pharmacy. A serious offense. Lisa says he did it for her. Just as suddenly, Joachim knocks on the door and says he needs to pick up his watch. Marek realizes that Lisa is trying to bribe the votes. Lisa begs him to talk to Beatrice. He promises to do his best. At this time, Amelie wakes up to a strange sound. Elise is trying to steal her baby. Amelie immediately asks what Elise's number on the list is and takes the baby. Eliza swears that she would never hurt the baby. Marek comes to Lore and gives her insulin illegally. Judith recognizes this and tells Beatrice that Marek is breaking the law. However, Beatrice is not going to punish him. Judith must learn everything Marek knows. The boy accidentally breaks a can of food. Hendrik advises his friend to donate some food. Then he will get some extra points. Christian gives away his apple. The other woman also donates her food. Beatrice sees this and gives one point to everyone who gave their food. But Hendrik is a bad man. He offers Lisa to do a special task, and as a reward, she will get the food. Lisa calls him disgusting. Their conversation is overheard by other customers in the store, including Beatrice. She stops Hendrik and hints that she can't protect him forever. Before leaving, he calls her his mother. Marek returns to the lab. He opens the locked door and enters the room where he is holding Peter. He is a sick man who was brought from the mainland. Marek offers him a deal. Peter gives his blood for testing, and if he is cured, he will be allowed to live on the island. Peter says he's starting to feel better. Perhaps his vaccine is working. Marek wonders what is happening on the mainland. Peter says everyone there is afraid of each other. You never know if the person standing in front of you is healthy or sick. Meanwhile, Lisa goes to Hendrik's house to get food and does whatever he wants. But they are interrupted by an alarm alert. The mainlanders are trying to break through to the island. They are ordered to turn around and fire a warning shot. But that doesn't scare the people, and Hendrik kills them all. Captain Mia doesn't like that he started firing without her orders. Vote correction time begins. Christian moves up one rank thanks to the help of a child, and Lena becomes 511. The residents vote to keep the second child, and Etienne will have to be the victim. Lisa stands up and calls Hendrik a rapist. Beatrice tries to interrupt the meeting, but the other women stand up in support of Lisa. Hendrik says it was all consensual. Maker supports the residents. 
no one should be above the law. Beatrice is forced to start the vote again, and everyone votes for Hendrik. However, Beatrice says that she will not kill her son. He will be banished from the island, and no one can argue with her. Lola recorded the meeting, but in the montage, she deletes all the fragments with people protesting. Later, Beatrice comes to the prison. Hendrik still hopes that his mother can save him, but she gives her jewelry that brought her luck. Marek checks on Peter, who starts to get sick. Marek wants to test his new development. A couple hours later, Peter dies and Marek burns his body. A new day arrives. Linus says he will be part of a future expedition to the mainland. Obviously, Marek does not like his decision. At night, Marek comes to Beatrice and asks her to forbid Linus to go to the mainland. Beatrice accuses Marek of being against her child, because of which he will not help Linus. Tomorrow, Marek asks his son to take care of himself. Hendrik will go with the military to the mainland, but he won't get a hazmat suit. While they are on their way to the mainland, the soldier tells them that they are in for a real hell, literally a zombie apocalypse. When the boat docks at the harbor, Hendrik is ordered to leave. Hendrik tells them that his mother has a hiding place, but the soldiers won't listen to him. On the island, Beatrice is called to the water supply building. They have a serious breakdown that could lead to the complete destruction of the water filtration. While fixing it, a woman finds a walkie-talkie and gives it to Beatrice. This surprises Beatrice since radios are forbidden on the island. She decides to wait for the chief engineer, Eulike. He says that the alarm was wrong and asks her to bring his wife to the island. Beatrice promises to think about it when there is a vacancy on the island. The expedition sails inland. Mia asks Linus to guard the boat. On the bridge, they meet the local count. Their conversation is interrupted by a man who wants to go to the island. The count can help him with that. These words are noticed by a soldier, and the man is immediately killed by the count's men. Mia gives the count crates of food, and in gratitude, he gives him medicine and crates of cargo. Linus decides to explore the town. He finds a group of locals. Linus doesn't understand why the people stick together in large groups. This makes the man laugh. He says that the virus is long gone. Linus is approached by Muhik. He has the flu vaccine. He knows of a lab with lots of medicine and working medical equipment. Linus doesn't believe it, and the man offers to take him to the lab. But before he does, he goes back to his shelter and shows a whole box of vaccine. He also wants to take refuge on their island. Just as suddenly, other people come out of the darkness. Mia's squad is attacked by the locals. A man manages to rip off his gas mask. Mia sees this and asks Heinz to stand in another part of the ship. They notice Linus is missing. Mia wants to find him, but the captain orders her to go back. Linus escapes from the shelter and notices a boat. He miraculously outruns the boat and jumps aboard, but his suit is torn. Muhik also jumps on the boat and asks to be taken to the island, but Mia kills the man. When the squad returns to the island, Linus is quarantined. He tells Marek about the guy who found the medical lab. Heinz starts to get sick. After examining his body, Marek notices a red rash. Marek tests the medicine his son brought and confirms that it is real. Linus asks to be released from quarantine and return to the mainland. Marek suggests Beatrice to prepare a new expedition, but she does not want to listen to him and before leaving asks Marek to give Heinz a fake cure. Later, Beatrice accidentally learns that Eulik works night shifts and asks his neighbors to keep an eye on him. Marek injects Heinz with the medicine and he instantly becomes ill. Meanwhile, Hendrik finds the mainlanders. The woman gives Vilma the watch in exchange for the disinfector. Hendrik offers the keychain and shows that he does not have a rash. Seeing that Hendrik is not infected, they begin to dance. But when Hendrik asks for a drink from her bottle, Vilma punches the guy. She then takes Hendrik to her house. Vilma tells him that the Count is the most important. Hendrik wants to talk to him to tell him some very important information. Late at night, he follows Vilma and finds out where she keeps her things. Then he kills the woman. Beatrice praises Lisa for her courage and offers to be her eyes and ears on the island with the promise of a better life for her and her husband. Marek takes Judith to the lab to help develop a cure. She learns that the Count is sending people from the mainland. Judith finds this disgusting. Marek reveals that he is trying to modify a flu vaccine, but to find out its effects, he has to test samples on people from the mainland. Even though these people are healthy, they have the virus in liquid form, which they inject into the people from the mainland. This afternoon, Heinz died. 
because of which Linus hides that he also got a rash. During the town meeting, Beatrice reveals that Heinz is dead and blames Mia for the failure of the expedition. Mia says it's not her fault. A vote begins to lower Mia's rating by 100. Suddenly, Lola's daughter Fiona starts coughing. Her friends repeat the cough and all the residents scatter. Later, Beatrice is going to punish the parents whose children started coughing at the meeting. Marek is against it, but his vote doesn't solve anything. Tomorrow, Fiona becomes ill. Lola suspects that Fiona is pregnant, so she takes her daughter to Lore. She has a test to confirm her fears. Lola wants Lore to have an abortion, but Fiona refuses. When the girl has left, Lore tells her that she has a tea that will be able to help her. In the evening, Lola offers Fiona a mug of tea and she takes a couple sips. When Lola has left the room, Tom comes out of the closet. He tells Fiona that he won't be joining the army so he can be there for Fiona. At this time, Ulick is trying to contact his wife. His conversation is monitored by the neighbors. The next day in the lab, a patient becomes ill. Marek says that they don't have much time left. When Marek leaves, the girl tells him that her brother sold her to Count in exchange for food for his family. Linus also gets hot and cold at the same time. Afterward, a rash shows. Marek admits that he knew it. Linus realizes his life is ending and offers to test any cure on him. On the mainland, Count asks Muhik's gang to tell him where he can find the lab, and then they can live in his city. Spark finds this offer very suspicious, but says the ship probably doesn't exist. His friend found the vaccine elsewhere. The Count takes Spark away and says that when the virus outbreak first started, he saw the medical ship in person. Spark is willing to tell the truth, but on one condition, the Count must help him get to the island. Spark also knows that the Count has a lot more medicine and medical equipment than they give to the island. The Count wants to take over the island and get the doctor to develop a vaccine in his town. The Count swears that Spark will get citizenship and his personal protection. Marek comes to Mia and asks her to leave for the mainland to find a medical ship. She says she has been forbidden to leave the prison. Hendrik bumps into the girl and asks her to tell him where he can find the Count in exchange for batteries. But it was a trap. They want to eat Hendrik. He yells that he has important information for the Count. The cannibals decide to use him to their advantage. They take Hendrik to the Count's castle. He says he is the son of Beatrice. He was forgotten on the mainland during the expedition. He also has to confess that Vilma is dead, but he didn't kill her. As a reward for the information, they get a jar of antibiotics. A new doctor's position opens up on the island. Evelik's wife comes to the interview. Marek asks a few questions, and Kaiso answers all the questions correctly. And the Count is going to talk to Hendrik in person. They tested his blood and found no virus in it. Apparently, he killed Vilma and Beatrice banished him. The Count doesn't like to be lied to. Hendrik offers to take the Count's army to the island. He knows the gaps in the defenses, so they can take the island. The Count accepts the offer. Electricity is generated on the island thanks to the windmill. Etienne will now work there. He finds a bottle of alcohol in the tools and gives it to his boss, Joachim. Only two people were able to make it to the second round of the hearing. Surgeon Daniela talks about her extensive work experience, because of which the islanders decide that the surgeon will be very helpful. Ulick shouts that he will return to the mainland to his wife, but Beatrice has no intention of letting him go. Today, their new resident arrives on the island, and with her, a gang of cannibals. Daniela settles into her new home and notices Evelik following her. Joachim gets very drunk and sees Evelik breaking a wind generator. But due to his heavy intoxication, Joachim stumbles and breaks his leg. The head of the military accepts Tom's choice, but his parents have to get a deduction in points. Joachim manages to survive Marek offers to wait for the surgeon. Judith convinces Marek to start the surgery before it's too late. When Daniela arrives at the hospital, Marek has already amputated Joachim's leg. Daniela feels sick and runs out into the street. A little later, she has to admit that she's not a surgeon. The book from which Marek took the questions, she had memorized by heart. Importantly, she has come to the island to save Marek and his son. Beatrice's days are coming to an end. Their conversation is overheard by Judith. She knows Linus is infected, and Marek is spending more medicine on him than he should. This is a gross violation of the law. Daniela attacks Judith, and after a prolonged fight in the back room, Judith is killed. Marek doesn't understand what's happening. Daniela can't tell the whole truth, but Marek must realize that there is a whole world on the mainland with living people.
he must trust her. In two days, the island will be overrun and Marek will have any resources for his research on the virus. He may even be able to save his son. Marek asks the woman to clean herself up while he cleans his room. Toward evening, they hide Judith's body. Fiona works at Beatrice's house. She offers to be her daughter. Beatrice also tells her that Tom is in prison because of his refusal to join the army. Fiona is not going to cooperate with Beatrice and she is not scared if she ends up at the bottom of the list. Beatrice doesn't like being argued with and orders Fiona to clean all the toilets in town. In the evening, Tom's parents come to visit. They see bruises on his face, but he says that he accidentally fell. Ulick is also brought to the prison with a bloody face. The man doesn't like the fact that the military is beating the prisoners. Marek notices that his son is lying on the floor. He administers first aid as quickly as possible and Linus is brought back to life. Tomorrow, Fiona becomes ill and faints. The tea caused her to lose her baby. Lola doesn't want Beatrice to find out. Beatrice wants to find out where Judith has disappeared to. To do this, she comes to Joachim and asks him some questions, but he doesn't remember anything. Then she decides to look around the hospital and finds a tooth. Beatrice immediately comes to Marek and accuses him of murder. He starts laughing and admits that he is the one who killed Judith. Beatrice can't kick Marek out anyway as he is very important, but someone has to be guilty. During the town meeting, she accuses Ulick of killing Judith and also tried to destroy the only wind generator. He denies any involvement in Judith's murder. In this case, Lisa has prepared false evidence. Beatrice asks Marek to reveal that he did a DNA test on the blood and confirmed that the blood belongs to Judith, but they are interrupted by Daniela. She takes responsibility for the DNA test. All the residents find Ivlik guilty. After the meeting, Joachim comes to see Etienne. He is now in charge of the wind generator. Joachim believes that Lisa planted the alcohol on him on purpose. He starts crying and Lisa offers to work at their house. Tomorrow, the military tie Evelik up and carry him into the water so that the waves can kill him. Marek returns to the lab and tells his son what he has been doing in the lab. At the beginning of the epidemic, Marek was returning home to the island. His wife Tessa worked at the local hospital. She was part of the vaccine development team. Marek came to the store where Beatrice worked. She allowed Marek to take some food and not pay for it. In the evening, he tells Tessa that the police have closed the ferry. Now she will not be able to come to the island. Lore worked as a nurse on the island. She prepared a room for the locals to analyze. Beatrice began to take charge. She ordered the employees to paint the glass. The store owner doesn't understand why they messed up his store and reminds them that he is in charge. Beatrice says times are changing. A little later, a line is lined up in front of the store. The clerk forbids anyone from entering the store. Now they have to give lists and the employees will bring the order. Some people start to argue. This forces Beatrice to say that they have guns and if anyone wants to start looting, they will kill them. In the evening, bandits take the store owner hostage. Beatrice immediately locks the door. Beatrice offers the employee a choice. They can let the robbers in and then they will lose the entire store or they will sacrifice the store owner. Everyone chooses the second option. Suddenly, the bandit accidentally kills a man, after which they run away. The next day, Beatrice meets with the island's chief of police. She says that she has created a local militia to protect civilians and proposes to develop a plan to protect the island from the outside world. The man thinks this is unnecessary, and then Beatrice shows the man who tried to rob the store. After a while, all the medical supplies are handed over to Beatrice. She assures Marek that her store is the safest place on the island. Lola was Beatrice's friend, which is why she got the job as a reporter. Beatrice allows Marek to take whatever he needs. Later, Marek meets with the mayor of the island. He considers Beatrice a great threat and proposes to get rid of her. A town meeting begins. The mayor assures the residents that they can survive and asks Beatrice not to forget that she is an ordinary citizen. Beatrice says that thanks to her militia, all the food and medicine is perfectly safe. Marek tries to tell them that it's not legal and Beatrice starts manipulating the facts. The mayor assures the residents that the virus is not dangerous. It causes a common rash. But Beatrice is convinced that the world they knew is disappearing and introduces a man who's been stealing supplies that should have gone to their children and asks them to vote to expel him from the island. The police take Beatrice's side and they all start beating the robber. Marek tries to save the man, but Beatrice orders the man to be pulled ashore so the waves can kill him. Tessa manages to decipher the virus. They have found patient zero, 
Riots broke out all over the mainland. People broke into the hospital where Tessa was researching the virus. They started killing guards and broke into the vault where they were keeping the infected man. Tess tried to explain that they wanted to find a vaccine, but people believed that it was the medics who released the virus, so they killed the girl and smashed the lab, releasing a concentrated virus. Marek is watching, but he can't do anything. Beatrice comes to Lore and suggests making the island's population manageable. She notices the number 513, and Beatrice makes up a legend that their island can hold no more than 513 people. Lore doesn't understand how Beatrice will get rid of half of the island's population. Beatrice needs Lore's help, or she will go to the mainland. As a reward for completing the task, Lore will be given a lifetime dose of insulin. After a while, the bodies of infected people arrive on shore. Lore and Beatrice took blood samples. They injected the sample into a local man. A little while later, he started to feel ill. He runs out into the street and dies. Beatrice convinces Marek to become a local doctor who will check the residents for the virus. He starts checking the residents, and Lola prepares a propaganda video, where Beatrice heroically donates medical supplies to keep the islanders safe. All the residents were completely healthy, but Beatrice still marked half of the residents red. Marek immediately realized that they were making up the results. On the lists are people who were against Beatrice's rule. She again says that no more than 513 people can live on the island. Marek has a chance to develop a vaccine to save his son. The mayor of the town is among those infected. Marek says the test results are correct. Already in the evening, half the residents are being put on the ferry. The mayor tried to protest, but he was quickly shot dead. Marek vows that when he finds the vaccine, Beatrice will pay for her actions. Linus listened to the whole story. He wants Marek to flee the island. Then he dies. Marek takes the confession tape to tell the island the truth. Lore asks him not to. Beatrice is not predictable. Daniela, however, has very different plans. The Count needs the island because of which she takes away the tape and destroys the evidence. Meanwhile, the Count finds a medical ship that he wants to give to Marek. The next day, the Count's army sails to the island, where a gang of cannibals is hunting right now. This concludes the first season. Write in the comments how you rate this series. We will also be glad to have your likes. We'll be back with a new video very soon. Bye.